TikTok has over a billion active users, with roughly 170 million of those being in the United States. But on March 13th, the U.S. House of Representatives voted 352 to 65 in favor of a bill that would essentially ban the app if its owner, Chinese company ByteDance, doesn't sell it within six months. So what is this TikTok ban bill that everyone's talking about? What are the arguments for and against it? And how is TikTok responding? First, let's dive into the bill itself. The Protecting Americans from Foreign Adversary Controlled Applications app would require ByteDance to sell its stake in TikTok, or again, face an effective ban in the US. According to CNN here, app stores that violate the legislation could be fined based on the number of users of a banned app. The bill establishes fines of $5,000 per user of a banned app. So in the case of TikTok, Apple and Google could potentially be on the hook for up to $850 billion in fines each. A possible problem with this is that TikTok might not be as easy to sell for ByteDance as you would think. First of all, TikTok is worth about $100 billion, so it would probably take several large investors to buy the app. It's also unlikely that another large media company like Google or Meta would buy TikTok because of US US antitrust laws, which basically prohibit big monopolies that disparage competition. We can actually look back to 2020 when President Trump also tried to get ByteDance to divest from TikTok. Back then, American companies Oracle and Walmart were candidates to buy the platform. But even if ByteDance were to find a buyer or group of buyers for TikTok, CNBC says that any kind of divestiture and then merger with another company or acquisition would have to be approved by the Chinese government, which would probably reject that and is probably advising ByteDance that it would reject that. Basically, the Chinese government is unlikely to approve the sale of TikTok to an American company. But who knows, if the bill does pass into law, we'll see what happens. Where things stand right now, the bill has passed through the U.S. House of Representatives, but since the U.S. Congress is divided into two legislatures, the bill will now have to pass through the U.S. Senate with a simple majority. If it is approved by the Senate, the bill would make its way to the president's desk where it would have to be signed into law. And President Biden has told the media that he would in fact sign the bill if it made it to him. So basically, the Senate is the only thing standing in the way of this bill becoming law. So why even bother pushing ByteDance to sell TikTok in the first place? I mean, seriously, how could this innocent little app harm any Anyone? Oh gosh, I see now. TikTok, again, is currently owned by ByteDance, a Chinese company headquartered in Beijing. So even though TikTok itself has a Singaporean CEO and global headquarters in Singapore and Los Angeles, TikTok still has to ultimately answer to a Chinese parent company. Obviously, the US and China have had an, uh, well, an interesting relationship to say the least. The two kind of despise each other, but still did a whopping $758.4 billion of trade in 2022. So they kind of love each other? I don't know, man. Anyway, tensions between the two nations have led many Americans to fear the potential implications of having such an influential app owned by a Chinese company. According to NBC, the wildly popular video sharing app is owned by China-based ByteDance, which under Chinese law is required to hand over information requested by the government. U.S. lawmakers worried that American users' data could be compromised are considering legislation that would require ByteDance to divest the app or it could be banned from U.S. app stores as we already discussed. Many are worried that because of China's strict information laws, TikTok would be required to hand over American users' data to the Chinese government if requested. Another fear is that China could potentially manipulate the information shown on the app to Americans to suit their interests. So essentially, supporters of the bill argue that China's ties to TikTok make it a national security threat. And because of that, TikTok should either cut those ties or face a ban. What's funny is that the state of Montana has technically already banned TikTok, but it's pretty much impossible for them to enforce. TikTok is actually already banned on all U.S. government devices. On December 20th, 2022, President Biden signed the creatively named No TikTok on Government Devices Act into law. Now, if the current bill were to pass into law, it actually wouldn't be the first time that the U.S. government forced a Chinese company to divest from a platform. Back in 2020, the dating app Grindr was sold by its Chinese owners after a U.S. government committee expressed national security concerns about Beijing Kunlun Tech's ownership of the app. And Kunlun had to sell Grindr for about $608.5 million. Kunlun originally bought Grindr in 2018, but the Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States reportedly informed them that its ownership of Grindr was a national security risk. And of course, this also wouldn't be the first time that the government banned a company from doing business in the U.S. According to the BBC in 2022, the U.S. had banned the sale and import of new communications equipment from five Chinese Chinese companies, including Huawei and ZTE, amid concerns over national security. Another interesting point is that practically all American social media platforms are already banned in China. CNN says that Beijing currently blocks most U.S. social media platforms, including Google, YouTube, X, Instagram, WhatsApp, and Facebook, because they refuse to follow the Chinese government's rules on data collection and the type of content shared. In 2010, Google pulled out from mainland China after operating there for four years. It said at the time that it was no longer willing to continue censoring results on Google.cn, citing Chinese-originated hacks on it and other U.S. companies. In fact, even TikTok itself is banned in China. The BBC says TikTok is banned in China along with other social media platforms. Instead, Chinese users use a similar app which is only available in China and subject to monitoring and censorship by the government. So what about those who oppose the bill and don't want to risk a TikTok ban? Lately, the hashtag keep TikTok has been going pretty viral with creators expressing their support for the app. Those who oppose the bill argue that an effective ban on TikTok would violate Americans' First Amendment constitutional rights to freedom of speech. Many also argue that a ban on TikTok could hurt small businesses 
businesses who have come to rely on the traffic they've gotten from the app. TikTok actually claims that it contributed $24 billion to the US economy in 2023. They also say that 224,000 jobs were supported by TikTok as a platform to grow and expand business. And that TikTok's US operations themselves supported an additional $8.5 billion contribution to the GDP, 2 billion in taxes, and 59,000 jobs across the US economy. Many also claim that American media companies like Meta and Google already collect information on their users, so TikTok isn't really all that different. TikTok claims that it's actually already invested $1.5 billion in American national security through what it calls Project Texas. Doesn't get any more American than Texas. Project Texas basically involved TikTok moving its American user data to servers in Texas, which they argue protects the data. Those in opposition to the bill have also argued that Congress is really wasting time and that it should be focusing on other issues that Americans probably care more about. So how has TikTok itself responded to the bill? TikTok, of course, opposes the bill and even posted this warning for its users to see. It encouraged users to type in their zip codes to call their representatives to pressure them to vote against the bill. Obviously, this didn't really work out in the end as the bill easily passed through the House of Representatives. But members of Congress were reportedly bombarded with calls from constituents. TikTok's CEO has also, of course, come out in opposition to the bill. He made many of the same points I mentioned earlier about TikTok's social and economic benefits in the US. So what do you think about TikTok? Is it a national security threat or is it just another social media platform? Let me know what you think and make sure to like and subscribe to support this video. That's all for today and until next time, goodbye.